people of the internet, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Out of the Park Baseball 17 GM Mode Sim commentary for the Premier League Baseball and the Brooklyn Atlantics. I am F5 Penguin. You can find me all over the web at F5 Penguin. And in the last video, we kind of walked away from the playoffs with our tail between our legs, losing yet again to the Wichita wing nuts and uh, we lost in the semifinals in six games didn't take them to seven didn't go to the finals they won back-to-back -back champions blah -de blah -de blah pop and circumstance pff, whatever we move on so we're in the off season and we don't really have a lot of things to do in the off season although a lot of things ended up happening in the off season so first and foremost um it's, it's time that we talk about this, and before I get into all the emails, I need to inform you all. I did the little vignette at the beginning of the video when Dave Molyneux failed, but uh, he was not near and dear to my heart as Mr. Mickey Draper was, and uh, if, if if you haven't known yet, he he's our owner of the Brooklyn Atlantics. Make sure you like and subscribe these videos, because if, if you haven't been watching, you didn't know that. But, you know, we, we brought him, we got to the playoffs three years in a row, and he was happy. And I guess the happiness of his success uh, caused him to pass away. He had a brief illness at a local hospital on the 29th of November, 1961. Team spokesman, speaking anonymously, told reporters that his son, Mickey Draper Jr., would take charge running the team, would eventually be named the new owner. He'd be more demanding in management style and an economizer in financial matters. So we now have his son as our owner. I want to make sure we say rest in peace to Mickey Draper. We will bring you gold home soon, sir. That said, we got some things we got to do. But first, we'll look at our new owner. Go to the front office. Go to the owner. Now you can see patience demanding, not lenient anymore. Fiscal economizer, so less of a budget. Involvement, hands off. So still good there, and priority is still balanced. So uh, just a little bit less lenient. Now we can't get fired, so that's not going to matter too much for us, but the economizer will because our budget will be a little bit lower, which means if we go over to accounting, he may take some cash from our owner just because. So the good news is the rule in this league is if our ma our owners do that, that money actually goes back into seats for the arena or for the stadium, so we'll be in the clear there. But yeah, Mickey Draper Jr., 40 years old. We're going to try to do some stuff, make this Draper family proud, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. So let's talk about what happened. Uh, before we go into what we did, uh, we kind of had to talk about what happened with our option years. We had Folo, um, we had Alcala, Estrada, all on these contract options. And wouldn't you know it, um, Wilson, and I forgot to, we, I missed the sim where we were doing the options, so everybody got re-signed. So it was kind of a, a stupid move on my part, but um, I think we're okay, just because this is what we got going on. So we went to retirees, Kurix was still in AAA doing his rehab, and he was still down there before we could actually play the playoffs, So or play our next round of the playoffs, we got eliminated before he can come back, so... He retired, so Kurix is gone. That's 20K we saved. Then uh, we were told from Mickey Draper Sr., okay, uh, you can't even see, you click on him, you can't even see him now. That's crazy. That's so crazy. He's not even in the system anymore. That makes me sad. Uh, Mickey Draper said we went to a very good rating for our fan loyalty, which was fantastic because if you remember, it was average when we started. So hooray. Moving on, uh, players retiring as well were Alex Estrada. We go over to him. He's retired, and this is good for us for many reasons. One, he was an option year at $800,000, and two, uh, I didn't renew that option, or I didn't void the contract option. I the, All of them renewed, so hooray, right? Like, yay, he retired. Perfect. So Estrada opened up $800,000 for us. And we told you we would go, and I told you we would go and get Noriega. That was what we were going to do. Well, unfortunately, it didn't happen. Here's what we got going on. So we re-signed Alex Garza, which we needed. 
We, at 40 years old, he's still doing amazing for us. So we got him for 50000 and then if he does go to, to the next season, uh, we got him at $70,000, we are going to be okay. You know, he's, he's pitching the, his career year. I mean, look at the innings he's pitching, 42 innings, which is average for him through the seasons that he's played at one ERA. <laughs> like, he's so good right now that I, there's no reason I'm not going to re-sign him. Hits allowed, 27. Like, this is really good. Earn runs, five. Best in his career best in his career home runs lowest allowed in his career so we're in good shape okay we are in fantastic shape with him as our like middle relief lockdown guy so we got 50k and then we're gonna have 70k if we do if he lasts that long we'll see we also re-signed Perdomo I know it was kind of a question mark but we need somebody defensively out in center field and I only had to pay $19,000 for him. So I got him for another year. He's good. So for through 62, we got him at 10K. He goes to FA. Nope. I re signed him. He's 19000 going into 1963. We're going to be fine there as well. So just like these little things we're doing to kind of improve our team because we didn't have a lot to worry about. I'm good. Now, unfortunately, like I said, I tried to go for Noriega. I offered him like 1.3 and he didn't take it. He went over to Kansas City, which is a human GM. I'm floored by this. I hate it. I hate it. 7.3 over 7. I was even willing to move room to make this happen, and it just couldn't happen. So I hope. Now, good news is he's out of our division. Hooray. We should be able to win against Minnesota again. Bad news is uh, he's on a human GM team, so that's never going to be a good thing. I hope he gets injured and has a career-ending injury. Get out of here. So, moving on, uh, we ended up also signing uh, Mike Gagnon. He's currently playing in our AA division, moving his way up. We needed a new catcher. And we also signed Phil Turby Phil. Phil Phil. So, we got Phil Phil. Uh, he's playing in the Burger King Baseball Club. And, yes, I will let you know now all of the teams. There are two big things that happened in this offseason, number one is all of our single A teams that were overseas actually moved on shore. So we are the proud owners and affiliates with the Burger King Baseball Club. And wouldn't you know it, Wichita are the McDonald's Baseball Club. There's also a bunch of other names. Some of the uh, GMs picked their names. I didn't care either way. Jeff picked the Burger King Baseball Club. They're based in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, and life is good. I'm okay with that. So he, uh, this center fielder is playing in our single-A Burger King baseball club team, and that's okay. You can see names like Carolina Pepsi-Colas, Cape Breton, whatever. So you go through this, you can kind of see some funny names in there. All of them have logos and all that good stuff. So that's happening. The other change I will mention in a little bit uh, with the addition of a league. We'll do that in just a second. So we signed him. Team owner changes, we know. We already talked about that. We move on. Then we also went ahead and fired our manager. I was unable to control anything that he was doing. It wasn't working for us. So I just went ahead and fired him. It clearly was not panning out the way we wanted it to. So basically, I went ahead and signed David Wallace, uh, not the CEO of Dunder Mifflin, unfortunately, but at $50,000, we have him running our team with our bat coach who's done, or bench coach who's done quite well for us. But look at these stats here. So you can see it's everything we want in the, in, in the type of manager to help grow our team. Relationships, good relationships here. I know we have lower influence with three players, but overall pretty good. So uh, this will allow us to have the right mindset and then we can also again on the right here as you can see edit our team so we can edit our strategies which is what got us to the finals last season so those little tweaks go a long way now we also had two big free agents that were coming up that i kind of forgot about and had to go take care of so rubenstein and leon and leon was the guy we gave up like five draft picks for and a bunch of money and a bunch of players so we had to re-sign him they both wanted 900000 at the start of offseason. I said, well, that's way too much money. I'm not going to do that. Well, turns out I was able to re-sign them for much cheaper. So you can see Rubenstein's just a stud, stud through and through. Uh, so we got him for 10 k this season. Next season, 400 450 470 Team option, 400 380 A steal. I was able to make this work. GMing on fleek, which is not a bread. So we got Rubenstein. He's locked in for five years. I'm thrilled, and we also got Leon locked in for five years. I'm thrilled here as well. 
10K this season, and he wanted 960 over five years, or over three years, sorry. Got him in for five years, 240, 420, 600, and then two team options for 350 apiece. So we've really worked out these contracts to be long-term. I locked this in, and I have no issue re-signing them further if we have to. We're going to be okay. But the good news is we won't have to hold on to both of them if they don't pan out, or we can move one for another younger guy as they get older. So we have some options here and kind of see which of the two pitchers are going to be better for us. I'm leaning toward Rubenstein just from his diversity in pitches, but Leon's got better quality pitches of the ones he does possess minus that curveball. So we'll see how that shakes out as well, but I'm kind of confident that these pitchers will drive us into the future with Salazar, Sabala. You know, we got a really good core of pitchers. Now, we had to shore up a couple of positions in the outfield. We knew that going into the offseason. That was our question mark. That's why we went after Noriega. We signed Brent Bischoff to $333,000, 55, and then 44 team options. See how this goes. He's 32. He's kind of questionable on his ratings, but his stats aren't bad. He's batting 300 last season, and the one before 240, one prior 266. So if we can get about 275 out of him, I'll be pretty happy, and we'll have somebody who can play in the outfield. Not great. As you can see, it's a three, but I want him as a pinch hitter, and I want him as the backup for all three positions out in the outfield. So that's got to happen as well, and I think we'll be okay here with Bischoff. So we got him too. Then we had the first-year player draft, and we have to really talk about how that went down for us. That's kind of why we're doing this. So we switch over to here, go over to our roster, go to transactions. And honestly, with the picks we had and the draft that was available to us, there wasn't much option out there, just a couple of players that were really good. So what did we end up doing? We'll quickly go through the players. I went all pitchers, even though I know I have a lot of pitchers. and kind of messed that up in the uh, in the free agent pool for our Burger King Baseball Club single-A team. Got Mark Dorn. I'm not going to go to scouting reports. You can see the numbers right here. We're kind of going to go through these quickly just because I wasn't sold on any of them. I picked a couple of guys. I got the top three picks that I had. We got the guys we wanted, but nothing to write home about. Learning more and more that these uh, scouting ratings are just not – not reflective of what actual performance is for some of these younger kids, but here we are. So, got Omar McCutcheon, Carlos Topetti. Most of these guys are starters, which we needed. Dave Fernandez, and that's why I went for these guys. We needed starters. Pete Anderson. We got Jason Voltz. I'm just pulling up the stats here so you can see them. John Mailman, which I love the name, and Mailman's good too. Look at eight stuff. Like that's really good. Felix Gomez, James Batstone, like that name too, and John Weir. So we got those 10 guys, and then we released Fernandez and uh, one of our right fielders trying to make room for our team. But we did release Fernandez. It just wasn't going to work out for us numbers-wise. Just didn't – wasn't too impressed. It was kind of one of our scouts' picks. But So, yeah, I'm noticing the scout, scout ratings don't really matter unless they match up one-for-one one with OSA. And when they do, they're 99% accurate. So I'm kind of mixing uh, case per nine, FIP minus, total number of strikeouts, and then going to the ratings kind of weigh it out. So we'll see if any of these guys pan out. We just need one or two to kind of bring us through to shore up our pitchers in single and double A and then kind of make some room at the triple A level for these guys to come up and excel to then grow into the majors or trade for picks. So that's where we're at there. What does that look like to you? Well, Putting aside the fact that we have a 30-man roster right now, we got Bischoff, Blanco, Capra, Valenzuela, Dufresne, Perdomo, Folo, Roadcap up in the majors right now getting experience. Some of these guys, not going to be permanent solutions. We know that. Uh, so we have to figure out who we're going to keep, who we're going to send back down, and I, I don't know. I really don't know. And then also we did call up Brian Mooney because Mizzle just didn't, didn't shock us at all last season. I don't think anybody's surprised by that. So... We have Mooney to deal with, and of course, we have Alcala's contract that we have to deal with for another season before we can get rid of him. Oh, also, we called up Sayaz and Nidisatro 
Nidhi Sastro. We got those two guys up as well. I think Sayaz will be okay. And a lot of you are saying on Twitter and in my comments on the videos that uh, this Kyle Nidhi Sastro guy is the future. So we're going to give him a go and see if it turns out to be something that we can keep long term or if he's going to end up being a bust. But we'll find out real quick here. Moving over to the single A team on the right hand side. A couple of guys are capitalized just because I'm keeping an eye on them to see if they do well for us. They're kind of our our, our uh, golden picks for the future, so we'll see how they turn out. But you can see I have a lot of pitchers, and then we're missing like first base, shortstop, left field, right field. But we have an abundance over here, so we're probably going to cut a couple pitchers and then make room for some outfielders back down one level. We'll probably move down Carroll. I don't want to, but we probably will. Or we'll move down Madden, one of the two. And then we'll move down someone else. We'll fill we'll fill space. Not worried about it just yet. So no worries. No worries. Don't freak out. So where does that leave us? It also leaves us with one of our catchers we called up from the international complex. And we have two catchers in every league, which we needed. And that wraps up our offseason and our first-year player draft for the season of 1962. I believe that's how I'm naming it, uh, offseason 1962 and then opening day 1962. So moving forward, something else happened during the offseason. We added a new league to the Premier League Baseball world. What exactly did we do? We added PLB France as you can see over here. So France has two divisions, the their major league and their gold division. So I'm going to look on the right here. I have some notes. Basically, the way it works is the 20-team league without divisions. They only have a AAA, 82-game schedule, and they start at the same time that the PLB does. They do not have playoffs. They have a DH, and they have a reputation of 7 compared to our reputation of 10, which should make us the number one place to play, and there's the number two. Uh, also, this ties in with a player's greed. You'll see the best of the best preferring to play at PLB due to the higher reputation, but you'll see unwanted players make their way over to France, so we won't have this plethora of old guys in AAA and in free agency. Instead, they'll get cut and then move over to PLB France, and some will convert back to the PLB later if they have a good season or two, which will be interesting. Uh, the third thing is... Their finances are about 70% of our finances here in the PLB. Minimum contracts are 7K, and their team's best players make around three fifty dollars to $500,000. They have a limit of 10 foreign players on their major league roster, unlimited in their AAA team. That's important to know. And they do not have a cash cap, as we do, of $2 million. And they only share 10% of their revenue. This will probably equal less parity in the leagues compared to ours, but that's okay. We kind of want to see who comes out victorious to find out those best players and hopefully bring them back to PLB. And we're already seeing that normal trade of the guy over to France. The normal corn belters trade of the guy over. He's making $300,000 over in France right now. So their created players that exist there are not in a feeder system. They're just created. They start playing in the AAA or in the majors. They're about 70% as talented. There's some good talent, but they should be able to, they should not be able to compete much against PLB teams, and like I said, they don't have a feeder team. Players are created every year and placed on the AAA teams as necessary. There we are. So, that being said, we have to see how well they are, right? So, the top 20 teams from us, so out of the 24 we have, the top 20, went on to face, or are going on to face, the top teams, or the 20 teams in the PLB France, and that looks like this. So, we'll pull up the schedule. We are facing Montreal. We have seven games, the best of seven series. The winner of each series, and it's just a one-off best of seven, gets 500 seats to their stadium, which we could use, kind of grow our season tickets, right? So that's what we need. So this is what we're looking at with our roster and the rotation that we're playing against. We should walk away with this clean, looking at the numbers. What's interesting is you can kind of see if we go over to our rosters and transactions page, pick like Bill Hop, for instance. I can click up here and now see his ratings relative to a different league, which I wasn't able to do before, which I'm kind of excited about. It's kind of cool to see. So you can see Hop's amazing in PLB France, the International League, but in the Major League here, he's not as good, even though he's one of our best pitchers we have. Again, proving that ratings aren't always the tell-all, and we're seeing that 
right in front of our eyes. So that's a thing. So the matchups look like this. You can't see. I'm just going to read them to you. Uh, no, because there's 20 of them. It doesn't matter. All of our teams play teams over there, and that's going to happen here in the next sim. So I'm going to leave it right here. When we get back in the next video, we will be in spring training, and we'll play the seven-game series. So what that's going to do for us and what's kind of nice is, even though I'm still working on trying to find a, a third baseman for Phil Pot, we do have Coral, and that's working. But these guys are all going to get some playing time, going to see who kind of shakes out to be our, our top middle relief guys to use. Over in our lineups, a bunch of young guys are going to get some time. So we got Ohala and Parrish splitting time, uh, Lehman and Davey splitting time, Dufresne's getting time, Bischoff's getting time. So uh, road caps in a pinch hitting spot. So these guys are going to get some growing time, and we're going to see if any of them can kind of come to fruition and be our backups that we need in the majors or know that we can call upon them in the minors. So we'll look at the left-handed pitcher lineup as well. You can kind of see that Ohala takes the start. Uh, Capra Bischoff, Road Cap gets the start, Dufresne back up. So a couple of guys are going to get some time to shine. We'll see if they do. We'll look at the stats and we'll make a decision. Easy. Give me your thoughts. Like and subscribe this video. Tell me what you think. What players are going to do well, what ones won't. Link in the description below for the Premier League Baseball website. You can kind of keep up with the league as it goes. And like I said, in the next video, seven-game series against PLB France. How will we do? I'm thinking we'll just sweep it out or maybe lose one game. We get into spring training. We'll look at those numbers as well. And then we're right around the corner from opening day 1962. How will the Brooklyn Atlantics fare Please stay tuned. I hope you enjoy these. And of course, I'm F5 Penguin. You can find me all over the web at F5 Penguin. This is Out of the Park Baseball 17 GM Mode Sim Commentary for the Premier League Baseball. I will see you after we get back from France. Bring back some pastries. I like pastries.